back to Akshita's recipes. I hope all of you are having a nice day. So today's recipe is a breakfast recipe which I'm making with oats and there's no sugar or sugar substitute that we're going to add to this recipe. We're going to add some other ingredients which substitute for the sweet sweetness but they're all natural and they're really delicious. So we're going to call this cardamom oats or elaichi oats because I'm going to be using cardamom and watch the video till the end because I'm going to show you how to make your own elaichi powder or cardamom powder at home which is super simple, no gadgets and no machines required. So I hope you enjoy this recipe and I hope you give it a try. Let's just jump straight ahead into today's lovely cardamom oats. So friends, let's start with this beautiful recipe of elaichi oats. Now here I've taken a pan, turned on the heat and I'm going to add one teaspoon of clarified butter or ghee. Now once the ghee melts, I'm going to add half a cup of oats. So this is my quarter cup measure, so I'm using it twice, so you get half a cup of oats. Now I'm using uh, the Quaker oats, you can use whatever oats you use generally. And now I'm just going to uh, fry this oats really well in this clarified butter or ghee for at least half a minute till all of the oats nicely gets coated with the ghee. So we're going to do this on a low to medium flame. And once our oats is nicely roasted, we're going to add one cup of milk. And we're going to mix the two ingredients really well together. Again, cooking on a low flame for just half a minute so that the oats gets nicely cooked in the milk. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of cardamom powder. And for those of you who want to know how I make my homemade cardamom powder, you can watch the video till the end. And now just mix everything well. Like I said, just for half a minute, we're going to cook the oats in the milk and the, with the elaichi powder added to it. Turn off the flame. And now I'm just going to transfer it into bowls. So I'm making two, uh, two sets of bowls of uh, this breakfast elaichi oats. And I'm just going to add a little bit more of milk. That's completely optional. So if you like it to be a little on the drier side, you can skip the milk. So I'm just adding about uh, two tablespoons of milk to each of the bowls, mixing it really well. And like I said, for the sweetness factor, we're just going to add some lovely dry fruits. So here I have one tablespoon of dried apricots that I've just chopped into small pieces. One tablespoon of cranberries. So you can add whatever dry fruits you have at home or whatever you like in your oats. Next, I'm going to add one tablespoon of blueberries. And for that lovely crunch, I'm going to add one tablespoon of almonds. So you can add walnuts, you can add cashew nuts, you can add even fresh strawberries, raspberries, apples, whatever you like with your oats. Because that will be the sweetness factor. So you don't need to add any sugar, joggery or any kind of sweetening agent. And that's it guys. Your lovely cardamom flavored oats is all ready. You can have it piping hot or you can have it at room temperature or even, you know, refrigerated for about a minute or two minutes or three minutes and have it. Now for the elaichi powder, which is super simple. Now I'm making about two tablespoons of elaichi powder, but we are using just one teaspoon for this recipe. So here I've taken about 12 to 13 cardamom pods. These are the green cardamom pods. Now I'm going to add them to my mortar and pestle. And I'm just going to lightly, you know, crush the pods so that they open. So you just give them a light crush like this. And then you will see that they open up instantly. And then all you have to do is just take out the lovely uh, elaichi or cardamom from the pods. Now I like to retain the, uh, the covering or the pod and I use it when I'm making my tea. I just add it to uh, the tea when I'm boiling my tea and that adds a lovely elaichi kind of a flavor to the tea. Even if you're making rice, if you're boiling rice, you can add this for some pulao rice or biryani rice. You can add the pods also. They add a lot of flavor. So once you have finished, uh, you know, getting the elaichi out of the pods, then all you have to do 
is just crush it to a very fine powder. So I like to make a batch of you know about two or three tablespoons and leave keep it in my uh, uh, in a small little glass bottle and put it in my refrigerator or even at room temperature and whenever I need to use it for any recipe you know it's available. It's better that you keep it in the refrigerator because that will uh, you know it will uh, enhance the life of the powder. So you can either keep it as a very coarse powder or you can make it a real fine powder. The choice is yours. And the aroma of this lovely freshly ground cardamom is so so heavenly. It's really really nice. So this was how I make my cardamom powder because I get a lot of questions from beginners as to Akshita, can you show us how you make you know the cardamom powder or uh, home ground? I mean, when you're grinding pepper powder at home, how do you make it? So this is just a tip, and uh, that's it, guys. So I hope you enjoy today's recipe and give it a try. And I'll catch you soon in my next video. Bye. Here I have two cups of oats. We're going to grind this in a dry mixer to get a very fine powder or flour like this. So this is our oats flour or oats powder already. Now to this I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of cinnamon powder, now this is optional but it really brings out the taste of these muffins. Now mix in all of these dry ingredients really well. Now in another bowl I'm just going to mash up two ripe bananas. Mash the bananas up really nicely. Next I'm going to add in two eggs. Mix in the eggs with the bananas well. Next goes in one teaspoon of vanilla essence, whisk that in well too, half a cup of melted butter, mix that in well and now I am going to add half a cup of brown sugar. If you don't have brown sugar at hand you can use regular powdered sugar. Mix all of this really nicely together. And now is a good time to preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Now we're going to add in the oats powder or the oats flour that we just ground. And we're going to fold this really nicely into the wet ingredients. So see that everything is really nicely incorporated. There's no dry part of the oats but everything is really mixed in nicely. Now I'm going to add 1 4th cup of chopped up walnuts, 1 4th cup each of, of raisins and dried cranberries and 1 4th cup of choco chips which is completely optional. Fold everything in really nicely because you want to get all of these walnuts and raisins in every bite. Now I've lined my cupcake holder with these liners. I've just applied a little dab of butter to the base so that they stick in easily. And now I'm just going to fill about three-fourths of the muffin liner. Don't overfill them. So with this batter, I got exactly 12 muffins. Just dab them down a bit. And now we're going to bake these at 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes or 22 minutes. So don't forget to preheat your oven and then you're going to bake these. And now they're all out of the oven. Let them come to room temperature before you take them out of the muffin holder.
So that's the remaining batter, which I'm going to again add into the uh, into the new cupcake liners and bake them. And now you can see that I've just taken one of them out and it's baked so nicely. The color is also very gorgeous. And this is the inside of it. Let me give you a clearer picture. Let me adjust my camera. There it is. So these muffins are really delicious and so healthy also. Friends, let's see today's delicious recipe of digestive biscuits. So now to a large bowl, I'm going to add 3 4 cup of oats flour. I've just taken the oats and ground them to flour in my mixer jar. I'm going to add 3 4 of a cup of whole wheat flour. Then I'm going to add 3 tablespoons of milk powder. 1 teaspoon of baking powder. One fourth of a cup of brown sugar 
And now we're going to whisk all of these dry ingredients really well together. Then we're going to add one third of a cup of butter, which is at room temperature. And now we're just going to get our hands in there and we're going to crumble up the butter and the mixed flour till it resembles breadcrumbs. So just mix in the butter really well with the dry ingredients. And then you get this kind of a crumble or wet sand kind of texture so that when you hold the mixture together it all comes together. So now you know you can add uh, the next ingredient which is milk. So add a little milk at a time and I used half a, mil half a cup of milk but use a little milk at a time and you're going to get a nice dough, a very firm dough with this uh, mixture. So you keep adding milk till you get a nice firm dough. Don't add all of the milk at one time, add a little at a time. Now you're going to knead this till you get a lovely, nice, firm dough. Now if your mixture becomes too watery, just add a little bit of whole wheat flour or oats flour. And if it becomes very dry, then add a little milk and again knead it. So I'll show you the consistency of the texture we're looking for. It's this kind of a texture. It's really nice and firm which you can handle with you, you know, easily. It doesn't crumble or break. Now I'm going to use two pieces of uh, butter paper or parchment paper and we're just going to roll it down to about an inch thickness. Now you need to do this because if you directly roll it with your rolling pin, it's, it might disintegrate or break. But if you use this method, then it's much easier. And in between, just lift the parchment paper and again put it back, otherwise it sticks to it and it becomes very difficult to roll it out. So now you can see that I've rolled it out to an inch thickness. And now you can use a round cookie cutter. Now I'm just going to smoothen it up by just you know rolling the pin over it once more, very gently. And this would be a good time to preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. So now I'm going to use uh, this round kind of an object. You can use anything that's nice and sharp and round. We just want to cut even size rounds. So you can uh, go with whatever size you want. If you want smaller cookies, you can go with smaller cookies. Whatever shape you want, uh, you generally you can use any cookie cutter that you generally use. And now we're going to use um, remove the excess uh, dough that's around it. Don't throw that away. You can again reuse it uh, to make these cookies. Just knead them again and then follow the same procedure. And now I'm just going to line my baking tray with some parchment paper. And I'm just going to lay these out, leaving a little bit of space because when we bake them, they do expand a little. So right now I'm making six, but I totally got about 10 cookies. And now I'm just going to take a sharp mat stick and twirl it around and get these kind of holes which generally, you know, digestive biscuits have. And then I'm going to bake it at 180 degrees Celsius for about 15 minutes. Let them cool to room temperature. And there you can see how beautiful they look. They're nice and golden brown in color. And this is such a healthy option because we're using oats flour, we're using uh, whole wheat flour, we're not even using sugar, we're going for brown sugar. You can even use a sugar alternative if you're used to using that instead of sugar. And now once they've cooled to room temperature, you can see how beautiful they are, even the base of it is nice and baked. And I'm going to break them and show you how crisp and amazing it is. It is crispy and at the same time when you bite into it, it's delicious and really nice. So I'm just trying to focus the camera 
and you can see how crispy and crunchy it is and it's really super delicious so guys if you like this recipe then do leave your comments in the comment section below and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and please do share my recipes with family and friends i'm gonna catch you soon in my next recipe see you till then So we're going to begin making the smoothie by first roasting two tablespoons of oats. We're going to roast this for just one minute on a very low flame. Now while our oats are getting ready, I'll just show you the rest of the ingredients. We will be requiring about one tablespoon of cashew nut as well as one tablespoon of roasted peanuts then we require one tablespoon of flax seeds and one tablespoon of chia seeds then we're going to require about three-fourth cup of water and two frozen bananas all I've done is just kept the bananas in the freezer for about an hour and let them just come to room temperature now we're going to take a blender and once our oats have cooled down we're going to add this to the blender now we're going to add in the flax seeds we start with the chia seeds, then go in the flax seeds, then go in the cashew nuts and the roasted peanuts. Then we're going to add the water and now we're going to peel the frozen bananas and chop them up into four or five pieces and add that to the blender too. You will find that the color of the banana is a little on the browner side. That's because we've kept it in the freezer for an hour. And then we're just going to blend it all together. So we add our bananas to the blender. Now at the end of the video, I have mentioned all the benefits of all the ingredients that we've used. And here our smoothie is all ready. This is an ideal breakfast. So instead of having anything else, if you just have this smoothie, it will just fill you up and you won't feel hungry for hours together. You can also you know, just top it up with some chia seeds or some seasonal fruit. You can just take this with you. Uh, when you're going to work or on a run or you can just carry it with you whenever you require it and just have it. It's so filling and it's so healthy. So I hope you try out this recipe and do let me know in the comments book box below how you liked this healthy smoothie. If you would like to see more healthy recipes like this then please leave your comments in the comment box below. So please friends don't forget to hit the red subscribe button on my channel. 
do ring the bell once you've subscribed so you won't miss out any of the videos coming up on Akshita's recipes. Give this video a like, share Akshita's recipes with family and friends. And I'll catch you in my next video. Bye and take care.